uh, matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. Uh, this can include solids, liquids, and gases as well. Um, now, matter is composed of atoms. Uh, there are many different types of atoms. Uh, each of these types of atoms we call elements. Another definition of elements is uh, the simplest form of matter, which still has uniform composition. So, for example, by simplest we mean we can take a compound, such as water, and break it down into its elements, hydrogen and oxygen, yet we can't break those down any further before getting into subatomic particles. Now, uh, these simplest pieces of matter, they have uniform composition, that is, um, for example, all hydrogen around the world is the same, um, and all oxygen around the world is the same. Uniform composition, the same throughout. So, uh, we have these elements, these types of atoms, and if uh, they are bound with other elements, uh, for example, combining hydrogen and oxygen, uh, you can get compounds like water, H2O. Compounds are two or more elements bonded together uh, with simple whole number ratios. Two hydrogens covalently or uh, covalently bound to oxygen, or sometimes um, elements can be ionically bound to each other as well. Now, both elements and compounds are pure substances. Uh, they are uh, they have uniform composition all around the world. All sodium chloride around the world is the same. All water around the world is the same. All hydrogen and oxygen around the world are the same. Now, sometimes though, pure substances are mixed with other pure substances then to give mixtures. Um, these mixtures are uh, non-uniform in composition around the world. There are many types of these mixtures. For example, there could be 1% salt water, 2% salt water, etc., etc. There can be skim milk, 1% milk, 2% fat milk, uh, whole milk, cream, uh, goat milk, etc., etc. There are many different types of milk. Um, this is because there are varying possible ratios of the compounds within them uh, because they are mixtures. So uh, there's two types of mixtures. There's homogeneous and there's heterogeneous mixtures. Homogeneous, homo, are the same throughout. Uh, whereas heterogeneous mixtures are hetero, different throughout. So homogeneous mixtures, also known as solutions, might include things like salt water. They look the same throughout. If you look with your eye, they look the same. Whereas heterogeneous mixtures, uh, they look different throughout. Uh, for example, pulpy orange juice. Um, part of it is solid, part of it is liquid. Or trail mix. Part of it is M&Ms, part of it is raisins, etc. Soil. Um, <clears throat> Uh, so, uh, we've got uh, pure substances and mixtures, um, elements and compounds. Uh, these can be interconverted between each other. Mixtures can be turned into pure substances by physical separations. A physical separation, perhaps separating salt and water from each other to give pure salt and water. Uh, for example, by uh, heating up that solution to have water boil off, leaving a bunch of sodium chloride at the bottom. Uh, these types of separations are physical in that uh, they do not change what substance you have. If you take mixtures and get pure substances from them, you're not changing what uh, you had, you're only changing what was around each uh, particle. Um, so that involved physical change, not chemical change, hence physical separation. But chemical separations allow us to take compounds and turn them into elements. For example, taking water and turning it into separate hydrogen and oxygen. You need a chemical separation to t turn compounds into elements because chemical change is involved, turning one substance into others. Yes, chemical versus physical changes. Uh, let's talk more about that. A physical change does not change what a substance is, um, whereas a chemical change does change what the substance is. Chemical changes involve chemical reactions, turning certain compounds into new compounds or elements. Now, uh, physical changes include things like standard kind of changes in state, like boiling and freezing. So let's say that you had a bunch of water, you boil it. Okay, so you vaporized it. Now it's a bunch of gaseous particles. In both cases, it was water. So it never changed what it was. Whether the water was stuck with its buddies or flying out in space, it was still water. You know this because later you could condense that water back into liquid. Uh, it never changed what it was. Similarly, freezing you can take liquid water and then you can turn it into solid water. And then uh, you know that you can turn it back into liquid water uh, by 
by heating it back up again. It was still water in all cases. These changes never involved chemical reactions, just changes in state, physical changes. Similarly, dissolving is a physical change. So you take sodium chloride, dissolve it in water. Um, how does it taste? Salty. How did it taste before it was dissolved in water? Salty. Um, now, you can later uh, boil off the water, uh, leaving sodium chloride pure again. Um, sodium chloride never changed what it was, hence physical change. Cutting paper, bending paper, still paper, physical change. Chemical changes are involve things like burning, rotting, or fermenting. Burning. Say you were to take uh, a hydrocarbon, uh, say as in wood, so C6HYOZ. Combust it, react with oxygen, and you get carbon dioxide and water. Now, you started with certain compounds or elements and you got different compounds. You changed what you had, hence chemical change. Um, clues that you might have had a chemical change include uh, color or odor change. For example, certain uh, compounds have certain colors. So if there are new colors, then that suggests that there are new compounds. Similarly to odors, certain, odor, certain compounds have certain smells. If you have a new smell, you probably have new uh, compounds. Also, heat and light beam given off, as in the burning case, precipitation of a solid, or uh, having gas bubbles released. Um, not as in during boiling, but as in producing a gas uh, sort of precipitate during a reaction. So, uh, we also have physical and chemical properties. Physical properties, uh, studying them does not change what you have. It does not ch involve chemical change. So, uh, there are many, many, many. Mass, color, odor, boiling point, solubility. You can put a piece of aluminum on a scale. You can get its mass, and in doing so, you don't change what the aluminum was. Physical property does not involve chemical change when studying it. Um, you can uh, boil water. Uh, you can later condense it back. Um, seeing what temperature it boiled at, its boiling point, you could study that boiling point, yet you never had a chemical change because that water could be recondensed back into liquid. You could study the solubility of sodium chloride. See how much dissolves in water. Yet, uh, later you could separate the sodium chloride from the water by heating the water off, um, hence uh, you never changed what it was. Um, studying it, but not changing what it was, not having a chemical reaction, that is a physical property. Chemical properties are the abilities to undergo chemical change. Um, flammability, the ability to combust. Corrosivity, the ability to corrode something. The ability to rust. All of these things, the abilities to react in some way, they end in itty. Either ability or flammability, corrosivity. Extensive and intensive properties. Extensive properties depend on how much matter you have. Um, for example, mass and volume. If you have twice as much aluminum, it'll have twice as much mass, and it'll have twice as much volume. Both mass and volume depended upon how much aluminum you had. Yet, there, pretty much everything else uh, is an intensive property. It doesn't depend on the amount of matter. For example, the color. Um, so, uh, you've got some indigo. Um, indigo, no matter how much you have, it has a bluish color. Uh, it doesn't depend upon how much you have. Same with taste. Uh, density, the number of grams per centimeter cubed, say. Um, that also doesn't get affected by how much you have. Water, for example, always has a density of one gram per centimeter cubed if it's pure and at four degrees Celsius. Uh, and pretty much all other properties are intensive as well. Thanks for watching, guys.